Hi class, so today i-discuss natin ang business processes. So, under pa rin to ng operational auditing, chapter 2 dun sa ating uh, PDF na ginagamit. So, business processes. So, itong topic na to is nandun pa rin tayo sa planning stage, di ba? So, kumbaga, uh, in the first or in the previous video, diniscuss natin yung uh, whole concept about um, operational auditing. So this time na ay napahapiyawan na rin doon about audit universe or the uh, list ng mga i-audit mo. Kung baga parang ito, ito yung mga i-audit ko. So this chapter 2 discusses about business processes as part of your audit universe. Kung baga dito magkakaroon kasi ng comparison kung alin ba yung mas magandang strategy when developing or creating your audit universe. So, Ulitin ko, audit universe is the list of departments or processes na i-audit mo for a company. Okay, so when you say audit universe, dividing up the audit universe for review processes into a number of business processes rather than according to how the organization is structured into departments, divisions, operating units, HQ functions, and so on has great potential to reveal opportunities to improve economy efficiency and effectiveness. So, itong business processes, sinasabi niya na isang option din or pwedeng i-consider ng mga auditors na when doing their audit universe, they should consider the business processes. So, ano ba itong mga business processes? So, business processes does not focus on a per department basis. So, imagine nyo ang isang company. Then, Ang per department basis na audit is, let's say, I will audit the treasury, I will audit the um, production or procurement, I will audit the delivery, parang per department. Diba? Ang business processes, ang sinasabi niya, process ang i-audit ko. Let's say, I will audit the um, receivable, ay, uh, sales, sales up to receivable. Diba? Kasi when you, um, kumbaga, sale, kapag nagbenta, when you sell, Pag nagbenta ka, magkakaroon receivable. So, I will audit the whole process regardless kung ilang departments yung matatapa, matatamaan ko. So, that is business universe. Kumbaga, or business process na consider mo sa audit universe. So, sinasabi na ito na mas magiging um, okay yung magiging um, opportunities mo to improve. Kumbaga, kung nakikita mo. Kasi sometimes there are, ano, there are uh, limitations Kumbaga, pag ang ginagawa mo is department-based, kumbaga parang ang i-audit ko ngayon, treasury lang, hindi siya tumutuloy. You imagine na parang pag in-audit ko, tapos sabihin ko na, okay, ito lang nakikita ko. Hindi ko nakikita as a whole ng buong proseso na isa lang siya out of the whole process. So, that is what we're talking about here na when we audit, we consider the business processes. So, sasabihin dito later on, hindi naman required na um, ito yung gawin, na business process approach. Pwede pa rin naman yung department approach. So, to be honest or to share with you then, so, um, dito sa, ano, may experience ako about business process na review, kumbaga, or audit, audit universe. So, ang ginagawa doon is, ayun nga, so, per process, titignan namin, ano ba yung significant processing nila? So, say, ito, mostly, ang processing nila is, um, ayun nga, yung sales to our Receivable, parang ganun. So, business process. Then, meron din akong na-handle na uh, department base. So, ang ina-handle, ang ino-audit ko doon, kunyari, is one single department. Hindi yung buong process. So, um, it's really different and um, based on the risk assessment, based on the approach that the auditors want to do in the, uh, kumbaga, dun sa kanilang audit. Okay. Business processes versus structure of organization. A business process way, of defining the internal audit universe of auditable units is also likely to result in an audit universe of fewer auditable units. So technically, pag business process approach, madalas mas konti, kasi buong process na eh, mas konti, pero ang daming departments na matatamaan. Although each corresponding to a process which requires coordination between a number of parts of organization, since when you choose the business process na audit universe, so kunyari nga yung revenue to receivable or sales to receivable, pwedeng matamaan dyan si sales department, si treasury, or pwede rin si accounting department. So, marami ka lang i-coordinatean, pero technically, you're doing the whole process. So, medyo mas nakikita mo kasi as a whole yung nangyayari. And meron kasing, kung mapapansin nyo, ang mga issue or mga process improvement, madalas nangyayari sa interconnection, sa pasahan within the one department to another. For example, na 
Kunyari, andun ka sa accounting department. Napansin mo, ay, hindi timely na re-record yung sales. So, ngayon, paano mo ma-understand yun, di ba? So, when you audit the process na buo, nakikita mo na, ah, kasi hindi pala nako-coordinate ni sales department, kay accounting department. For example, dang, for example, in the situation. Kung baga, yung mga interconnection between the two department or more departments, madalas na doon yung ano, process improvement na pwede mong mapansin. Okay? So, next. It is likely to be a more complex. So, mas complex siya, syempre, kasi iintindihin mo as a whole yung business process and not only the department. And also, you need to understand yung interconnection nila. Ano ba yung required time, turnaround time na ma-communicate ni sales kay accounting, for example, diba? So, kailangan mas um, detailed or mas toro yung planning process para ma-understand mo ano-anong departments ba talaga yung included sa isang business process. So, the auditor who chooses the business process method of defining the scope of audit reviews is faced with the need to identify. So, identify mo all the relevant na department and kanino mo i-communicate na in-audit mo ang sales department or ang, uh, kunyari, kino, uh, i-communicate mo na ang i-audit ko yung revenue to receivable, di ba? So, kailangan mahanap mo sino yung mga kailangan kong communicate dito sa aking engagement. So, the main benefit, so, ang main benefit ng approach na, approach na business process approach that is that it should encompass all the relevant issues and aim to provide reassurance to management on the effectiveness of the internal control across the whole process. So, kumbaga, process approach, process na ikita mo as a whole. On the downside, syempre, kailangan yung planning mo is very careful, very thorough, and marami kang kakausapin. So, it is very carefully how they approach the engagement and to ensure that the fieldwork is adequately coordinated in order to initially identify and consider all the risk and control issues. Okay. So, we do not necessarily promote. So, ito yan. Hindi naman sinasabi na best pa rin yung business process kasi kung titignan nyo, in the actual practice, many are still using the structure of, arg structure of organization approach kung titignan mo. Ha. Kasi minsan, meron namang mga based on this assessment na possible naman na ganito yung gawin. So, ang sabi dito, we do not necessarily promote or suggest any specific method as the ideal. So, it really depends on the environment and culture of the organizations. So, doon na lang magbabase kung alin ba talaga yung gagamitin mo. Auditors will need to assess the risk inherent within their organizations as the primary basis for allocating audit review resources and accordingly adopt the most suitable review methods of their specific circumstance. So to share din dito sa experience ko about structure of organization. So ito, may um, experience ako na nag-audit based on per department. So technically for me, siguro kaya siya naging workable na ganun kasi they have... Um, Service Level Agreement. So, Service Level Agreement or SLA, ito yung um, document specifying the responsibilities of two different departments that are interconnecting. Let's say for a process of sales to uh, receivable. Let's say sales to receivable yung process. Then, I audit, for example, the sales department. Then, sasabihin natin, eh, hindi mo nakikita as a whole. But they have this SLA. You review the SLA and you see there na ang kanyang time ang kanya ko yung turn around time is dapat two days pa before niya masend. So, in case you notice something na may discrepancy, it is already documented in the SLA, agreed by the sales department in the accounting or treasury department na merong ganitong turn around time. For example, diba? So, doon nakadocument sino yung dapat uh, mag-communicate dito, sino yung kailangan mag -ano. So, technically, there is already an established documentation of their own responsibilities that the internal auditor will review. So, di ba, hindi na siya, hindi na siya magiging issue about it. So, technically, it's all about the risk assessment din talaga and paano ba yung nag-work yung isang organization before you assess which kind of approach will you do. Okay. So, let's say um, you chose the, ano po, the identifying processes. So, this approach focuses on a number of relative economic events. So, dito, ang tanong, paano natin identify what are the processes? So, let's say, ano, business process kasi yung chapter ito, di ba? So, let's say na pinili ko yung business processes. So, now, paano ko malalaman ano-anong processes yung i-audit ko? So, uh, this topic, this subtopic will teach you on how to do it. So, 
we suggest first a basic and then a more detailed list of business processes commonly found in organizations. So first, you check what are the common. So actually, during my business processes, then uh, type of audit, uh, meron na kasing established na most likely processes na hindi naman nawawala in each organization. Let's say, syempre, in sales to receivable, etc. So dito, i-discuss natin na meron ng mga basic na ito lagi meron. Ito yung lagi meron sa mga ano sa mga company. So, kung meron mang matatanggal, siguro ilan lang, pero most common na talaga sa kanila. So, start with that. Start with that. Then next is, for me, ang nagiging, ano ka talaga, nagiging approach ko with it. So, titignan ko yung, uh, let's say, trial balance. So, familiar naman kayo with the trial balance. So, titignan ko, ano ba yung, um, anong, sa anong process tumatama itong uh, account na to. For example, nakita mo si Cash. Ano account siya itong matama? Next, may nakita ka inventory. So, dapat may process ka about inventory. So, tinitignan mo yung balances at tinitignan mo saan process siya pampasok. Kung dun sa existing processes na nakalist mo is wala siya. So, technically, meron kang process na hindi na consider. So, that's how you identify processes. Okay. So, ito yung sinasabi ko six. Ay, naputo. Six. O, oh, ayan. Basta. Ubik. Okay. Napo, natatakpan kasi ng Zoom ano sa akin. So, ito yung sinasabi natin na uh, usual na meron sa lahat ng organization or lahat ng company. First is the revenue process. Since, syempre, most of uh, companies naman talaga, revenue ang kanilang um, goal, kumbaga. So, revenue process is one of those uh, processes na hindi nawawala sa isang organization. So, this relate to those activities that exchange the organization's product, let's say, nagbebenta ka, for services, products and services, so pwede ding nagbibigay ka ng service, kapalit ng cash, or pwede ding, ayun, receivable muna, temporarily. So, ang mga elements included dito is credit granting, processing orders, delivery and shipping, billing to customers, activities associated with accounts receivable, bad debts, including pursuing debtors and writing of balances. So, ito yung mga under ni revenue process. So, hindi siya nawawala. Unless, syempre, kunyari, kung non, not for profit or hindi yun yung goal niya, etc. Next, expenditure. Syempre, kung may revenue, merong expenditure process. So, those activities or systems that acquire. So, ito naman yung pagbili niya ng ibebenta niya, pagbayad niya ng mga salaries ng mga nabibigay ng service. Tapos, ayan. For example, ito, ah, ensuring that suppliers are stable. So, under the expenditure process, nandito yung about kay supplier kasi bumibili ka sa kanya nandito yung process nung paano ka nag uh, kukuha ng suppliers etc next paano ka nagre-request ng goods meron ka bang ganitong documents sa kailangan before makapag-request next receiving securely storing and correctly accounting for goods all the uh, <coughs> all the activities associated with accounts payable so Next, recruiting and correctly paying staff. So, dito papasok nga yung salaries. Ensuring that all taxes due. So, dito rin papasok yung mga pagbabayad nila ng tax under expenditure process. So, next, one of the six uh, ubiquitous processes is the production. So, kung meron ka ng revenue, pagbenta mo, may expenditures ka na, yung pag bili mo, meron din di tayong production or conversion process which is usually para sa mga uh, nagmamanufacture na business. In this context, the term conversion relates to the utilization and management of various resources, such as inventory stock, labor, etc. In the process of creating the goods to be marketed by the organization. The key issues in this process include accountability for the movement and usage of resources. So, Dito mo makikita, paano ba nako-convert from this to this? Paano yung accountability? Ganyan. So, next natin is the treasury. Siyempre, hindi mawawalan yung mga company ng treasury. Kasi siya yung nagde-define ng cash requirements, siya yung nagmamanage ng cash, siya yung nag allocate ng available cash to various operations, investment planning, outflow of cash sa pagbabayad, kapag may dividends then But technically, one of the process na laging meron is the treasury process. Fifth is the financial reporting process. Financial reporting process is ito yung um, month end. For, for example, every month end sila. So, you first identify every kailan sila nagko-close ng books. So, technically, this is about closing. This process is not based on the basic processing of transaction. So, technically, hindi siya yung, ano, yung pag-record. Kasi ang pag-record, pasok na siya dito sa mga to. So, let's say, 
revenue process. Included na dito kung paano ini-entry yung debit na uh, accounts receivable and credit to revenue. Pasok sa process na to from the processing up to recording lahat. So when we say financial reporting process, this is the reporting part na. This is the monthly closing. Let's say, ano yung mga adjustments, ano yung mga uh, adjusting entries, kumbaga, and paano nila rin report into management. So yun yung pasok sa financial reporting process. So number six is corporate framework process. This process incorporates those activities concerned with ensuring effective and appropriate governance process. So ito, more on the compliance side, kung ano yung mga uh, required or appropriate governance processes and external accountability. So ano yung mga kailangan nila outside, kumbaga, na dapat meron sila. So, dito sa corporate framework process, we identify what are their external accountabilities and check if, ayun, uh, na nagagawa ba nila. It is to do with the development and maintenance of values, culture, ethics, and effective management, strategic infrastructure, and control frameworks that should aim to give form to the underlying direction, structure, and effectiveness of an organization. This category can also include issues such as specific industry regulations and compliance. So under the corporate framework process, we check how do they identify if there are new regulations related to their um, organization or are there new compliance requirements na kailangan and how they do abide or how do they do follow yung mga new pronouncements or yung mga new regulations. So that is one of the six na needed process natin. So sabi natin, so to sum up to, to sum up yung ating discussion, so mayroon tayong tinatawag na business process approach and mayroon tayo yung department approach. So choosing between these two, uh, kumbaga hindi required na si business process lang talaga. So as I've mentioned, pwede nga ito talaga yung pili mo. It really depends on the organization. Pero under business process approach, we um, recommend na maganda tong gamitin, lalo na kung uh, gusto mo talaga makapture yung whole process. And when we identify what are the processes, what are the business processes, we start first with the six na common na meron ang lahat. Kung baga, parang most likely hindi mawawalan nito. Mawalan man, bawas ang dalawa, isa, tatlo. Diba? Tapos, hindi tayo nag-end dito sa anim na to ah we double check the trial balance we double check their balances saan pumapasok itong itong account title na dalit si may isang account title saan siya pumapasok sa process pag review mo so kung wala siya doon ibig sabihin may na-miss out kang process and you need to understand as a whole kasi sabi nga natin ang business process approach maybe matagal gawin ang planning kasi we understand we understand what processes do they have hindi pwedeng may hindi ka ma-consider pero pwede rin namang uh, may process na hindi ka i-audit pero hindi significant. So, we do our uh, analysis or planning, alin ba dito yung significant process? Let's say, may corporate framework process pero hindi pala significant. So, we assess in the planning phase kung aling mga business processes yung i-audit natin or what departments are we auditing if we chose naman yung department approach. So, that's all for today's video. So, ensure to uh, read din yung chapter 2 ng ating PDF para mas maging uh, holistic yung understanding natin about business process. So, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.